I'm going to show you how to get the most out of the brand new Galagos runes. Let's go. Quick tip about restoring your monsters. So, Comptuous just gave us restores for free. Not restore tokens, but rather just the ability to restore our revive monsters. So, for instance, head over to our Teon here. Teon got nerfed really hard by the most recent patch notes. So, in lieu of that, the developers have given us the option to restore our monsters for free. Now, we only have about two weeks to do this, so make sure that you make the decision soon. But, let me help you out. Even if you plan on keeping the monster, for instance, Vanessa. Vanessa is still an extremely strong monster, even after the revives. I plan on still building her or still keeping her around. So, with Tion as an example, I can restore that monster, but then just use that material to bring him back up to full again. And what that does is it's going to give you account experience points. So, I would take every single one of the monsters that you can, restore them, and then you can make the decision to build them back all the way again, or at least just build them up partial the way, so that way you get that account XP. The Galagos runes are a one-time clear type of content, but it is very challenging and it's honestly a lot of fun. So, every season will be two weeks long. Each season will come with a seasonal buff. This season, your summoner does more damage with their fire weapon. This is important for Orvias and Cleefs, as they are their main damage dealers. For Kina mains, you can probably get away with most weapons, because they all bring some sort of buffs and utility. Water monsters have a 100% damage increase, so think about saving your best water monsters for some of those later stages. So why are we, quote, saving monsters? What's the deal? Alright, so let's look at this first section on energy. So you might already know this, but a major mechanic in this new content is monster energy. Not health, but energy. The more you use the monster, the less energy it will have, and it will deplete all of the energy by using it a lot. Once you've depleted all of the energy, you won't be able to use that monster again for the duration of the ruins. This is why it is very important to pay attention for the rest of the video so you can get the most out of the monsters that you bring. Alright, the next thing that you will need to do is choose what monsters you're taking in with you. Now, you have to bring at least 10, but no more than 30. At this point, most of us probably have at least 20-ish monsters that have been leveled up to 70, and mostly skilled up, at least some of our 3 and 4 stars. You will need to build a variety of monsters for this content, so it's time to start making some hard decisions with your materials and build some more monsters. I barely had 30 level 70 monsters, so I pretty much just brought everything that I had. There is a requirements list down at the bottom that describes what types of monsters you will need to bring. It will light up when you have met the criteria. This doesn't mean much outside of you just have to bring them. You don't necessarily have to use them on any particular team. Let's talk about who to bring. The most important monsters to bring are a variety of support monsters. Unless you're a Kina main, then you can get away with less support and more damage monsters. Typically, your summoner is going to be doing the majority of the damage throughout the early stages. I'll be talking mostly from a Cleef main perspective, but most advice will, I will give will probably work for Orbias. But Kinas have a very different playstyle, so you might have to modify your approach. For Kinas, think about bringing frontline monsters to do the damage. One of my guild baits is a top level Kina main, and I will be sharing some of his advice later. This is a stressful thing, having to pick monsters, it's tough to know what's going to happen. But remember this is a long term sort of thing. Most players won't even make it past floor 3 on their first go at these runes. So what I want you to do is go in with your monsters, learn how everything works, and decide in the future what monsters you might want to build for the next season. By the way, these seasons are two weeks long, so we have plenty of time to build, upgrade, and try out these ruins multiple times throughout that two weeks. One specific type of monster you will want is either a Water Harg or Wind Griffin Bernard. They both provide a move speed buff which will be essential to the trap stages. This screen is the level or stage screen. You can see what floor you are currently on here. There are a total of four. Here is the recommended power level to complete this floor. This really doesn't mean much, so just listen to me and not this. As you can see, there are different paths that you can take to reach the end of the floor. 
let's talk about each of the symbols and what that stage is. The Double Swords is a basic monster stage with lots of low-level monsters and a couple of higher ones mixed in. The next room is the Stone Tower Buff Room. These rooms will give you stone towers which you can activate to be given a choice of three buffs. The buffs you choose will stack up and last the entire duration of the season, all the way to level 4. I will talk more on my thoughts on the different buff choices later on. The next is Skull with Horns. This is a regular boss stage. These are not like your final bosses, but they are still kind of hard. Make sure to preview the stage, look at the strategy section before going in, learn who the boss and the monsters are so you can make the best decision on what monster or monsters to bring with you. The quote bosses of these floors will appear multiple times, not just at the end of the floor. Later on you will see these treasure stages. Don't go to these, the rewards suck, you get better rewards by going through the combat stage and getting more refinement mats and Galagos coins. Later on there is a ghost merchant stage. He sells materials, scrolls, and legend runes. The legend runes aren't worth unless they have a really good set of stubsats, or maybe you're lacking a slot for crit damage rage rune. The mats and the scrolls are definitely a good value. Also, there is a hidden stage where you don't know what you're going to get. I think I would prefer to know, so I typically try to avoid these stages. The last type of stage is a trap stage. These stages are quite unique, and they come with a set of puzzle challenges. But seriously, if you plan on doing a trap stage, you will need two things, a Bernard or Water Harg, and a serious mental illness. I'm avoiding these stages at all costs because they are not worth losing my sanity over. If you want a challenge, go for it, but I would rather go fight some monsters. Okay, let's get into the walkthrough of the stages and the floors. Now, I'm not going to be covering every single stage and every single floor. I might do an in-depth guide when I do finally complete and beat Floor 4, but that might take a while because Floor 4 is extremely challenging. For the first floor, you can completely clear most of these stages with just your summoner alone. Just take your time, bring some low-level summoner healing potions if you get low on health, or just use your built-in recovery skills. Kina heals on her skill 3s, Cleef has his fire staff skill 3, and Orbia has a heal or vampire effect on her dark staff. Use these skills towards the end of the fight or between fights to heal yourself back up. Healing potions and a lot of food are also very cheap, so use them. Remember, the reason why we're trying to do this solo by ourselves as a summoner is because we want to conserve the energy of our monsters for later stages where we're really going to need them. While making your way through these stages of Floor 1, try and aggro a couple of monsters one at a time so you don't get overwhelmed. A lot of monsters have movement patterns that are back and forth, so get in range of a small group or a single monster and try to draw them away from the larger group so you can take on those creatures one by one as needed. Definitely don't take it too slow though because there is a time limit and for the first stages you probably won't have an issue with the time limit but later stages you very easily could run out of time. Okay, let's talk about the buffs and buff rooms for a second. At the end of every combat stage, you will be presented with three buffs. Also, you'll get this same set of three buffs when you enter a buff stage with stone towers. These buffs you can choose from are random and you will need to take the best buff for your summoner, monsters, and strategy. I typically was choosing things that gave me more survivability. There were plenty of options for more damage, and this could be a good option for Orbia mains because nuking down enemies will be vital for you. As a Cleef main, I can't really nuke down enemies, so being able to last a little longer in a fight and not get one shot by elites was crucial. Alright, here's a big bonus tip. Your summoners actually count as a class. I know for a fact that Cleef is a knight class and is affected by any buffs that affect the knight class. I haven't officially confirmed this for the other summoners, but Orbia as a mage and Kina as a support. Be thinking about this when the buffs are presented to you, and choose the one that seems most appropriate for both your summoner, monsters, and strategies. 
For example, one of the buffs that I chose, I got was to revive night monsters. Not only did it revive my Teor, but to my surprise, it also revived my summoner as a night type summoner. This is crazy powerful because losing a summoner means you lose the battle, which takes energy from your monsters. So take this knowledge into your decision making when presented with the three different buffs. If you want to watch my first run all the way to the end of Floor 3, I streamed it live so full unedited playthrough and commentating can be found here. I will also leave a link down in the description. Okay, so route planning will be important because you will limit your choices of stages down the road depending on the path that you choose. For the most part, there is no wrong answer on which path you choose. The main decision you will have to make is what you prioritize more getting more buffs from the stone tower stages, or taking on more combat, which in turn gives you more of the coins and refined stones. I chose the combat routes most of the time, attempting to maximize the refined stones and coins. The first major hurdle will come with the floor one boss at the end. You are faced with a dark Shurekli and a light Borbo. As a Cleef main with a summoner power of 146,000, I was not able to solo this. I was able to beat it though with an unmaxed Konamiya. I chose Kona because I figured I would want to save my better supports for the later stages. And also, Kona cleanses shock, which Shurekli gives off a lot of. Perfect. If you're a Kina main, just bring your wind weapon to cleanse the electric shock, or you will die. After you beat Shurekli, the light Borbo will appear. Be careful, because his attacks do slap pretty hard. Beat both of these bosses, and you are making your way now to floor 2. Moving on to the second floor, this is where pathing gets important. This is the path that one of my guildmates took as a Kina main. They are a top level player on my server and they still couldn't beat the floor 3 boss. He knows now what changes to make for next season. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't beat it, but what I want to stress is making sure that you get enough coins for everything that you need in the shop. We will talk about the shop at the end. The goal with this pathing was to maximize the combat stages and get as many materials and coins as possible as most players won't get past floor 3 and most of the top level players and whales couldn't beat floor 4. So expect to not get very far in this first season and maximize your coins by ignoring the buff, trap, and merchant rooms. Okay, back to the walkthroughs. You can always try out a stage with just your summoner and see if you can do it. There is no penalty for failing a stage if you just use your summoner. So try it out with your summoner first. The regular monster combat stages I could solo, but the mini boss stages I did take a Lulu with me. My summoner power is about 146,000, but if you are lower, you could probably just bring any weaker support monster with you during this floor and you'll be just fine. If you can't clear the stage solo or even with one monster, just bring two to three monsters with you. There is no shame at all. We brought 30 monsters with us for this exact reason. If you can't complete floor two, you will still have enough currency to get the important stuff in the shop. Okay, so many people get stuck on the boss stage on floor two, the double roads. These guys are no joke and they will one shot you and all of your monsters if you are not careful. This was my strategy, and you might do something different, but here it goes. I brought Chloe, Bastet, and Sekhmet. If you have Water Lich built, he's amazing here as well. Any stripper will really be fine, so that way you can strip the attack and defense buffs. Honestly though, the bosses are very squishy, which is why Chloe was the key here. Eat some attack food buffs before walking in, go straight to the little monsters, and try to group them together. Have your Chloe soul linked and pop her skill too, the one with all the full invincibility. Do as much damage to the little monsters as you can, and right before you're about to run out of invincibility, pop it again and keep doing damage. Make sure you get out of the area quickly as you will now easily get one shot by the boss's attacks since they now have full attack buffs. Kite the monsters and the boss around the room until Chloe's skill 2 comes back, and you have enough mana for at least one skill. Go straight to the smaller monsters and finish them off if you can. Pop Chloe's skill too before the bosses get to attack. Do a little damage, then back out and do some more kiting. Keep up this rotation until you beat down the bosses. I know I said the bosses are quite squishy, but I would not switch off of Chloe just out of safety and keep her skill too ready. 
Now, if you want to try to solo this, you actually can, especially as an Orbia main. Go watch Barcode's video here. He actually soloed it as an Orbia main. Just another reason that Orbias are broken. Okay, so at the time of this video, I have not completely finished Floor 3. I do have one stage left and the boss, but I will do it on stream with you guys later on. If you are looking to optimize your coin and refinement shaw rewards, this is an example of a path you could take. Thank you again to my guildies in Dior. Okay, so on the regular mob stages, you are going to want to bring at least two extra monsters with you, but just to be safe, I would bring three and focus on support, tanky, and hybrid supports. I got away with a bunch of three stars for this floor because I figured I wanted to save the energy of my nat fives for the later boss stages and floor four if I get there. There is a chance of running out of time on these stages, so risking it with only two monsters and possibly losing energy for running out of time is not worth it. Just bring your three three-star monsters and go for it. The very first stage was actually the one that caught me off guard. You get to the third part and you are met with a double lich, and boy do they slap. The strategy here is similar to many other stages. Take one at a time, wait for them to spread out, and then duck over into the right or left corner. Take these guys on one at a time and you'll do fine. The rest of the floor is definitely doable with three monsters. Just take your time and try to take out small groups and don't aggro the entire area of monsters. For the rest of the stages, I used three and four star monsters. My teams were Shushu, Azalea, and Shannon, and later I slapped the Shushu out for the Rakaja. Here's a couple tips for this floor. There are a couple trap sections, even in the regular mob stages. So you'll want to make sure that your Bernard is ruined up. I was able to actually get through most of these trap sections without the speed boost from Bernard because I hugged the wall, which seemed to make it a little bit easier. Tip number two, build up your ultimate gauge outside of the fights and in the fights, of course, but save it for bosses or if you accidentally aggro a large group. The fire liches hit really hard here, so you'll want to kill them fast and the ultimate is extremely helpful for this. Remember that 3 and 4 star monsters don't have ultimates, so if you do have a 5 star monster with you, it might be good to swap to them. Quickly use that ult and swap back to one of your healers. Now, I haven't beaten the floor 3 boss yet, so if you want to see some footage, come watch my next live stream or head over to Barcode's video, link is here. This boss will be the biggest challenge yet. There are a total of four bosses, a Dark Borbo and Light Talates at the same time. And after you kill one of them, a Dark Arachne will spawn and another one after that, who as we all know, applies a lot of poison and spawns those little spiders. I'm probably going to run a full water team. Remember, we get the buff on water. I'm gonna bring Annabelle, Bastet, and Theomars. A tip would be to try to kill Borbo and Talatis around the same time, so that way you can burst down the Arachne as quickly as possible. I'm not sure what I'm going to bring yet, but probably Shushu or Annabelle because of the poison. Annabelle is great all around and provides the defense down for Cleefs and Kina mains, but Shushu can cleanse all the poison no matter how many B debuffs you have. Either way, you need a cleanser because the poison will kill you. I will cover stage 4 when I beat it which to be honest might be a while, so if you want to see that, consider subscribing. Okay, let's wrap things up. The Galago shop has a lot of nice items. My priority is the 5-star Devilmon and the LD Legendary pieces. The LD scroll is quite expensive, and we all know that our LD luck sucks. I like the idea of saving towards at least a guaranteed LD Nat 4 down the road. The rest of the shop is crazy expensive and I'll probably just save for the outfits with whatever coins I have left. I hope this guide has helped you. If you are struggling with a particular floor or boss, leave a comment or join my Discord. I can definitely answer some questions for you there. Thank you for watching my videos. This one took quite a while to make, so I would appreciate you liking this video if you learned something. And as always, I'm Topher Smurf telling you to keep on gaming.